just another beautiful Sunday. I was bragging to Nanny Emma about my wonderful adventure. Goodness, that's incredible. Weren't you scared? Of course not. Dad taught me. Why are you still here, Amy? Get ready for your piano lesson! Oh, it's Mom. Again. She rushed in, snatched the phone out of my hand, said, Go now or I'll delete all these videos. Okay, just delete them. Nothing you do could ever make me care more about those noise-making logs. Then I leapt to my room. Always ballet and piano and violin. What kind of mother forces her kid to do things they don't like? Ugh, I won't back down this time. I have my videos all backed up online anyway. She can't control me. What? Huh? What else? I turn around to see Mom drop to her knees. No, no, it can't be. Just this morning, my husband was still... Dad had suffered a stroke on a trip to survey a gem mine, and they couldn't reach the hospital in time to save him. How could that be? He's not only my dad, he's my bestest friend. I bet the news is just as hard to deal with for my sister Briona, as she was always the one who went on business expeditions with him. He's the best dad we could ever ask for. But he's gone, and it felt like Emma and Briona were the only people who really loved me now. Just last week, Dad was sitting here, next to me. Darling, it's not good for you to just sit home and wallow. Why don't you get out of here for a few days? And go where? Next week, your sister is going on a trip to a new mine. You can tag along. I'm sure she'd enjoy the company. I don't know. I don't like business trips. I'll bet you can make time for some adventures while you're there. There's bound to be hiking and things you like to do. Since when does mom support any of my hobbies? She really must not want me around, huh? If that's what she wants. Okay then, sure. We were already running late for our flight when Briona realized she had forgotten her passport. I offered to stay with her, but she insisted that at least one of us should make the flight. She assured me she'd be back in time for the next flight and we'd see each other soon, so I hugged her goodbye and headed toward the gate. While waiting for Brianna to arrive, I've already booked myself a skydiving session, as recommended by the hotel's receptionist. This thing is right up my alley, but the weather doesn't look too good. Are you sure this is normal? 100%. That's what makes it special here. People come from all over just for these winds. This is what you call extreme sports, isn't it? Yeah, right. Bring it on. So on the count of three, I was free-falling. It was an unrivaled exhilaration. The ultimate thrill! Until I deployed my parachute. Instead of gently floating to the ground, I was carried away by gust after gust of wind. Then I blacked out. I slowly opened my eyes. What has happened? Am I in heaven now? I look around to see nothing but a beach, framed by a dense forest. This place was clearly deserted. Maybe not so deserted. There I saw a group of tribal people, dressed in strange clothes, wielding spears, I tried to move closer to get a better look, but game over. They all turned to my direction. I ducked down immediately, but their footsteps grew louder. I held my breath, wishing for a miracle. Oh no, this is definitely my end. But unexpectedly, the hand pushed me down further into the bushes, as if they were trying to hide me. I looked up and saw it was a man talking to the other in a native language. The talking stopped. Seemed like the rest had left. Thank you. Thank you so much, handsome mister. Sorry for bothering you. I'm gonna get going now. I may have let you off, but the others won't. These people are aggressive and will attack any intruder. Oh, he can speak English? Nice. I'm safe now. As I followed him through the forest, he stayed quiet, but I couldn't help brimming with questions. Where did you come from? Why are you here? You're not a local, right? Are you a scientist? Can you at least tell me your name? Silas. Okay, Silas. May I borrow your phone to call my sister? She'll pick me right up. Do you think I'd be here if I had a phone? I also got here by an accident a couple of years ago. Living like one of them is the only way to survive around here. At least until someone comes to save us. No, no, that can't be. It wasn't a deserted island, but I was certainly deserted on it. We arrived at a cave on the other side of the island where, according to Silas, the locals never roam around. You'll be safe here. I'll be right back. I didn't need him to take care of me. He may have stayed here for years, but I won't. I'll escape. It wouldn't be so hard to build a raft, right? So I gathered some logs. You hungry? 
Silas came back and threw something wrapped in leaves. Ah! Get these gross bugs away from me! I would rather starve! <laughs> these are a delicacy. You have no taste. Stay here. Don't do anything stupid. It's getting dark, so I had no choice but to go to sleep hungry in the stuffy, mucky cave. There's dirty moss and bugs everywhere. Ew! At the break of dawn, I couldn't stand it any longer. I got up to continue working on my raft. Ta-da! Easy peasy. Now goodbye, stupid island! But no! My beautiful raft crumbled and sank as soon as it touched the water. Feeling defeated, I laid on the sand in frustration. Suddenly, I heard a whistle. Hmm? Silas? How am I supposed to get up there? Am I his pet or something? What gives? Making me walk all the way up here? Mind you, I haven't eaten in a day. Then let's go get breakfast. But get changed first. He then took me to a river and showed me how to catch fishes. What do you mean I'm supposed to get my breakfast with this stick? Watch and learn, princess. Then Silas jabbed the spear into the water again and again until it's full of fishes. Okay, wanna challenge me? Psst, that's easy. Only, it's not. It's like the fishes could read my mind. It's been like half an hour and still nothing. There's plenty of fish in the sea. But somehow you can't catch any. Don't expect anything from my batch. Whatever. I'm not hungry. I don't need him. My sister will surely come and get me out of here on our private chopper soon. But Silas was really rubbing it in. Grilling fish in front of me until the delicious smell filled my nose. But no way I'd give in to this. This is your best bet. Unless you want to try grilled rat or cicada or... Fine, gimme. <laughs> when we first met, I thought you were cute. But after seeing this... Ugh, this smug Tarzan. Full now? <laughs> then it's time for work. Work? So you're only keeping me around to be your slave? Do you want to keep living in that cave? You shouldn't steal the bugs home like that. We continued to walk deeper into the jungle until we reached this huge tree. We should build you a shelter up there. You'll be safe from the wildlife, and the natives don't go to this area. Does it need to be up so high? If they are that dangerous, how come you survive here this long? Are you playing me? <sighs> I got really lucky. I was swept away by a storm while sailing alone. And when I washed up here, the natives were so ready to, you know, send me to God. But thankfully, the chief's daughter, Nora, desperately begged her father to let me live. And for some reason, he did. That wouldn't happen to just anyone. Oh, this Nora girl must have been caught in some love at first sight. That's why you stayed here all this time. So romantic. Stop wasting time. Let's get to work. Building a shelter proved to be more difficult than expected. And Silas proved to be quite bossy. Hand me the big branch. Bigger. Amy. Rattan rope. Give me another knife. Just wait a second. Let me catch my breath. You were so determined a few minutes ago. Go take a break. I want to finish this before sunset. I sat there, watching Silas work as the afternoon turned to dusk. And I must have dozed off for a while, as when I woke up, the treehouse was done. To be honest, it was better than what I expected from him. But where is he? I looked around, but the only thing I found was his scribbles on the ground. Stay here. I was glad to have my own shelter, but there was nothing to do to pass the time. Suddenly, there was a sound. Must be coming from the tribe. I followed the direction of the sound, hoping not to get lost. But soon enough, I found a clearing, where a group of the natives were gathered around a huge bonfire. They were chanting something. Others were dancing, others cheered. It looked like they were having fun, which hit me with a wave of homesickness. For a moment, I was so lost in their celebration that I forgot I was being stealthy. Uh-oh, not again. I could have tried to run, but I froze. Thankfully, Silas stepped forward, telling the others to stay. As he approached, we made eye contact briefly before he signaled people that the coast was clear, then gave me a quick wink before returning to the fire. Shortly after I returned home, Silas did too. Are you trying to get yourself killed? I'm not kidding when I say it will be very bad if they find out about you. I'm sorry. I'm just scared and lonely. I'm all by myself and my family must be looking for me everywhere. To my surprise, Silas came over to comfort me. Everything's gonna be alright. I got you. Who? Where? How are you here? She clearly didn't know much English but her weapon pointed at me was enough to know that she was angry. Silas immediately ran over to calm her down. I didn't know what they were saying, but she left, though not before giving me one last dirty look. Turned out it was Nora. Oh, what a relief! An acquaintance! Why didn't you tell me earlier? 
Don't celebrate too soon. Nora insisted you leave immediately. Oh, she knows how? Then I don't have much of a choice whether I stay or leave here, do I? Don't worry. I'll take care of Nora. And he must have, because the days passed by and the natives never came to drive me out. Silas continued to visit me every day, bringing cloves, teaching me how to pick fruit, swing on branches. Soon the work turned to play. He started teaching me tribal dances and vocabulary, and we visited the waterfalls and lakes around the island. It's pretty fun. It felt like going on adventures with my dad again. Confident in my knowledge of the island, I started to venture out on my own. But Silas didn't prepare me for this. A leopard showed itself and slowly moved towards me. I tried to stay composed to find a way to escape, even though every bit of me was freaking out. When suddenly, Nora jumped down from nowhere and petted the leopard as if it was her little kitten. She gave it a fish and the kitty just happily ran away. Thank you so much. I'm Amy, Silas's friend. Silas, mine. Yes, he's all yours. I hate him so much. I wouldn't even touch a strand of his hair. Silas? Ew. No, no. Nora huffed loudly before leaving. Here. Or maybe I shouldn't share it with you since you hate me so much. Oh, stop it. My life was on the line. It was not time to confess my feelings. Oops. What did I just say? I continued to stutter, making lame excuses. You're not even listening to me, are you? You haven't heard a thing I've said. Huh? What did you say? He grinned and left without another word. I couldn't stop smiling at the silly bracelet. The island isn't really that bad. I have the freedom I've always wanted. I wake up with the sunrise and have things like this. This really is the life. One day, the sun had already set and Silas still hadn't come over. I was starting to worry when he arrived with, Nora? Silas said she wanted to bring me some clothes. I was relieved that she finally wanted to make peace, but her expression confused me. When I thanked her, she didn't say a thing or even smile. We sat around the fire. Silas and I talked about one thing after another. Oops, we might have forgotten about Nora. But the language barrier really is a big deal, you know. And so she just sat there sulking. Suddenly, she stood up, causing hot coal to splatter all over me. Silas hastily helped me clean my hands as Nora stormed off. Is she okay? Maybe you should go follow her but Silas reassured me she'd be fine and went to find aloe vera sap for my burns. I think she misinterprets our relationship. Does she? Because I too thought there was something going on. I was too surprised, but managed to gather myself enough to reply clumsily. Says who? I don't think you've formally courted me, sir. Tomorrow will be our first date then. In the mushroom forest. What do you say? I was glad Silas had saved this place for a date, because everything about it was curious and beautiful. Before long, I had wandered far ahead of Silas. I knew I had gone too far, but something drew me deeper into the forest. I walked along this cave. As I thought, I saw a ray of light at the end. And there really was. The cave was not a dead end, but it was just covered by vines. And, oh my god, this is like a whole nother paradise that hasn't been discovered. And there was wreckage of an old helicopter. I immediately called Silas over, and he seemed to not have any idea about this either. We explored the helicopter the whole morning, but it was nothing except a rusted hunk of junk. We were about to leave when Silas hit a button and the radio came to life. We had found our new hobby. Since then, we went there every day, listening to music and pre-recorded content on the stereo. But eventually, we somehow got a faint radio signal. And for the first time, we had some connection to the outside world. I normally didn't care so much for news, but my interest was piqued by a familiar sounding story. Right after the death of the biggest name in the gem industry, his wife was kicked out of the house. Any relations to the missing of the youngest daughter? Who will be the winner of the fight for his inheritance? Was this real? Were they talking about my family on the radio? Why would my mother leave? I then recalled my mother's strange behavior before I left. She, for the first time, encouraged me to go on an adventure. And I somehow ended up here. Was it even a coincidence? Oh no, how could a mother do this to her own daughter? Calm down. I believe there's more to this. Don't jump to conclusion yet. Personally, I don't think tigers eat their young. Maybe, maybe not. There's only one way to find out. I need to go home. Immediately. Hi, I'm Addison. But all my friends call me Addie. I'm just an ordinary girl who doesn't have any particular talents. But there is one thing I do have. That is... Oh, why don't we just watch the video to see what it is? This is my older sister, Olivia. She's beautiful, isn't she? 
she's also an amazing singer and has a talent for art. She can pretty much draw anything. I mean, I don't know how my parents could have such a perfect daughter like her, then have me. But I'm fine with that. Olivia was all about winning trophies and medals. Well, I was happy with the ice cream and ton of snacks my parents gave me for getting a B on my math exam. Hey, Addie, my baby. Guess who's got some new trendy clothes? Oh, Mom. Dad. I don't like these things. Why are you buying so much? It's such a waste of money. However, Mom's desperate look made me cave. So I reluctantly grabbed a random item and went to try it on. Oh, it's a crop top. I stared at myself in the mirror. Okay, so my parents' dumbfounded expressions made their feelings pretty clear. I looked ridiculous. See, I told you already. I'm way too short to wear tops like this. Right at that moment, Olivia walked by. I immediately ran over to her. I think you should have this top. It'll bring out your nice figure. You'll look so cute in it. Mom shook her head. No, if Olivia wears this, everyone will see her navel. Um, isn't that the point of crop tops? Then Dad chimed in. Anyway, Liv, where are you off to in such a hurry? It's not that nonsense model club again, is it? Speaking of clubs, is the school dance club still recruiting? You should join. You'll get in for sure. My sister rolled her eyes, then left, slamming the door behind her. I loved my sister, but she just seems to find me annoying. She was like the ice queen, always shutting me out. She never allows me to borrow her clothes or to touch her stuff. And if I ever try to go into her room, she freaks out. It's not that she's mean as such, but she tends to act like I don't even exist. <sighs> it's okay. I mean, I'm kind of used to it. I live my own life and she lives hers. So that's why when I got my first cell phone and started to use social networks, I didn't try to search for her profiles, though I knew she was on all those platforms. That evening, my mom asked me to go upstairs to call Olivia for dinner. No answer. So I began pushing the door open. She suddenly appeared from the bathroom and yelled, Hey, what are you doing? You know you're not allowed in my room. I knocked, but you didn't answer. Mom says it's dinner time. She hissed at me and shooed me away. Ugh, why did she have to treat me like I was some pest? The way she was so weird about her room was annoying. Hmm, maybe she was hiding something in there? Nah, probably I was just overthinking this. Olivia was always like this. Life went on, and my sister, well, she continued to distance herself from me. But then one weekend, I walked downstairs to find her cheerfully humming a song as she danced around the kitchen. When she saw me, she smiled and said, Morning, sis. Come sit here. I made you breakfast. Okay? This was weird. I cautiously sat down and kept looking at her. Um, why are you so happy? And where are mom and dad? Mom and dad just rushed off on some work thing. Then she put the plate in front of me, grinned, then continued. Mom made cookies this morning and told you to take them to grandma's. Tell her I said hi. Oh, you're not coming with me? No, no can do. Sorry, I've got work to do. She continued to look at me and I got the feeling she wanted me to hurry up. Before I'd even finished my toast, she passed me my jacket and bundled me out of the door. Having no choice... I made my way to Granny's while in deep thoughts about how odd this was, until I realized that I didn't even have the cookie bag with me. I'd left it at home. Gosh, I immediately rushed back. But, hmm, why was there a strange car parked outside my house? I lingered back and watched as a middle-aged man got out of the car. Before he even got to the door, Olivia opened it and smiled at him. I dove behind a bush so I could carry on watching. Huh? Why was he handing her flowers and a gift box? She happily took them from him and even leaned into his ear and said something. 
Oh my god. So this explains my sister's strange behavior. They're a couple, aren't they? I never thought that my sister would be interested in an old man like this. Shocking. But wait, what if... What if he's deceiving her? As Olivia may look sharp, but she's actually very innocent. If that was the case, I would beat him black and blue. But this was just my speculation. I can't hastily act without knowing the truth. So I decided not to let them know that I was there, and quietly entered the house through the back door to get the cookie bag. Later that day when I arrived home, my sister was back to her ice queen self. She was cooking in silence, so I told her grandma said hi, and she just grunted and carried on stirring her soup. Hmm, I needed to find out what was actually going on. The perfect opportunity arose a few weeks later, when mom and dad went away on a weekend trip. I told Olivia I was meeting some friends for a picnic, but this was a lie. I actually hid in my faithful hiding spot and watched. As expected, the old man showed up and Olivia let him inside. The door was ajar, so I tiptoed inside and heard them laughing in the living room. I peeked in, and to my astonishment, my sister was sitting on the couch wearing the weirdest outfit ever. It was those kinds of clothes that only catwalk models wear. And most of all, she had this heavy makeup on and looked like a totally different person. The strange man was sitting next to her. Both of them were looking at her phone and laughing happily. Oh gosh, now everything was clear. From her reserved nature to her seem-to-be-secret room, it was all so she could continue to hide this age-difference love story. I didn't know how to react now. I just kind of felt bad for her because she had to hide it. I mean, this was her home. And we were her family. We might not have been close, but she was my big sister and I wanted her to be happy. If this love was real, then I fully supported her. And if this guy turned out to be bad, well, then I'd protect her till the end. My parents returned that evening, so I set up a family movie night. A great idea for family bonding, right? I chose a romantic movie in which the main actress is much younger than her boyfriend. In the middle of the movie, I turned to my parents and asked, Mom, Dad, if you were their parents, would you allow that relationship? They gave me confused looks. Then Dad immediately asked, Hey, Addie, don't tell us that you're in love with an old man, huh? This startled me, but before I could say anything, the doorbell rang. I was about to go open the door, just to avoid answering Dad's question, but Olivia was faster. Not long after that, she turned back and shouted at me, Addie, how dare you touch my phone? What's up, Liv? Who's at the door? Go ask your dear daughter Addison. She gave me a dirty look, then stormed up to her room. My parents immediately bombarded me with loads of questions. What's happening here? Who was the one ringing the bell? Why that manner of Olivia? Okay, the one who rang the bell was Olivia's boyfriend. So... Earlier, when Olivia left her phone in the kitchen, I noticed that there was a message from a man named Henry Davis. I immediately searched for him on Facebook and found out that this was the same guy who'd been visiting her. So, I used her phone to text him, telling him to come around at 8pm. I thought it would be better if Olivia could make her relationship public with our parents. But, Hayes, it seems she didn't take it very well. Anyway... Now I had no choice but to tell my parents everything. Their faces dropped, and without saying anything, they ran upstairs and banged on Olivia's door. But there was no reply. Instead, all of us heard a rattling sound from the back door, and Olivia had fled. Our parents' faces turned red, while I felt so guilty as I not only wasn't able to help her, but only worsened the situation. The next day... Olivia still hadn't returned. She also didn't show up for school, which caused my parents to freak out. Then I suddenly thought of Henry. Right. Why didn't I think of asking him from the beginning? So I immediately contacted Henry and asked him to help find Olivia. That afternoon, when I just got home from school, I saw Henry driving off. There was a note stuck to the door 
saying Olivia was fine, with an address below, and it also said if we come there at 9 a.m., we'll see Olivia. The next morning, we showed up earlier than scheduled. Huh? It was a studio, and just like Henry said, Olivia was there. She looked so glamorous and was so busy prepping for a photo shoot that she didn't seem to notice us. Henry welcomed us and started explaining everything that made my parents, as well as me, speechless. Turns out, the truth was far from what I thought. He was not her boyfriend. Instead, he's her manager. He saw Olivia's potential and guided her to become a photo model and a TikToker. The flowers and gifts were from the brand she was working with. And the other day, she wore that outfit and makeup for a TikTok video. After the shoot was over, we walked over to her. But she took one look at us and ran away. I managed to catch up with her, then said, Sis, why didn't you just tell us the truth? We're your family. We'll always be on your side. On my side? Really? You have no idea what it's like to be an outsider. It doesn't matter how many competitions I win. I'm invisible, while well, you get praised for just getting an okay grade on a math test. I want to be a model, but they don't want that for me. They want me to be miserable. I'd rather leave that house to do what I love. I was dumbfounded, and so were mom and dad, who by this point had caught up with us and heard everything she'd just said. Dad hugged Olivia. Then in an emotional voice said, Olivia, it's not that we forbid you from doing what you want. We were just worried for you. We just know that this industry can be complicated, and we don't want you to get hurt. That's right. And it's not true that we love Addie more than you. You just excel at everything, and we just didn't want Addie to feel insecure. We're really sorry, Olivia. We all love you. Oh, no, Mom. Don't worry. I never felt that way. Actually, I've always admired Olivia, and it made me sad when she ignored me. Olivia burst out crying, and our whole family hugged each other tightly. Sorry to interrupt, but you must have had some idea about Olivia being an internet star already, right? I mean, it's easy to tell from her social networks. I shyly said, I... I don't follow any of her accounts. I thought she just wanted me out of her way. Henry then patted my head and showed us Olivia's social media accounts. And wow, she had millions of views and followers. We all watched some of her TikTok videos together, and she totally rocked it. Seeing how much this meant to her, my parents came round to the idea of her being a model, and they even thanked Henry for helping her. Then Olivia came closer to me. Hey, Addie. I'm sorry for being so cold in the past. Turns out, you love me so much and will support me regardless. At least now, if I really fall in love with an old man, I don't have to worry, right? Then everyone laughed. Oh, even though my plan didn't, well, go exactly as intended, I still call it a success, because it all ended out great in the end. You thought it was all finished, huh? Nope, not yet. There's one more thing I want to show you guys. That night, for the first time, Olivia let me go inside her room. Wow, it was like a mini studio with expensive flashlights, a ring light, and a camera. And her clothes and makeup collection were super impressive. Oh, do you remember what I said at the beginning of the video about being an ordinary girl? Well, that hasn't changed. But now I can confidently say that there is one thing I do have, and that's an awesome big sister who loves me unconditionally. Finally, I'm out of that morbid place. Now let me tell you, sharing a cell with a dozen other noisy, stinky, grumpy dudes ain't fun. Anyway, here I am. Free as a bird now. Hmm. So no one's here to pick me up. Suppose I'd have to call mom. It took me a few seconds to familiarize myself with my phone. Jeez, it'd been four years. It was a miracle I hadn't turned into one of those leg-cradling crazy dudes. How I ended up in there in the first place was a joke. All I did was take some stuff from one or two warehouses and sell them on. No big deal. Yo, Mom, it's your boy, Cole. I'm out, and yeah, I need to lift home. I spoke the moment I heard Mom's voice. Cole, oh, I... 
Do you have any idea what hell your actions have put your mother through? My dad was so good at overreacting, but I needed somewhere to stay, so I could handle him. But dad, mom, come on, I'm still your son. You have the heart to see me homeless and sleeping next to rats? There was a brief pause. Then dad grunted, You can stay for a few weeks, but only for your mother's sake. Thanks, dad. You're the man. Bingo. My parents were like putty in my hands. This was the life. I played video games all day, then partied all night. Then one night, I was getting ready to meet my friend Moose, when mom told me that the pizza delivery guy was at the door. I shouted down to her, You can shout me this one, and I'll get the next. I finished getting ready, and I must say, I was looking smooth. I strode down into the kitchen and grabbed a slice of pizza. Dad was sitting there glaring at me over his report. If you can't afford to pay for items, then I suggest you don't order them. He looked at the pizza slice in my hand. Mom walked up behind him and placed her hands on his shoulders. Darling, give him some more time. He's still adjusting to outside life. Thanks, Mom. You're the greatest. I gave her a greasy pizza kiss on the cheek. Um, any chance you can lend me some dough? Dad shook his head and sighed while Mom went over to her purse and passed me some money. Hey, there'd be plenty of time to get a job and be responsible. Right now, I had four years of lost time to make up for. Once, I borrowed Dad's car. I swear I only had a couple of beers, but the world glitched out and went all blurry. The next thing I know, I'd driven straight into the neighbor's front yard. Oops. I opened my eyes the next morning to a killer headache. So all I wanted was some black coffee and a plate full of bacon. But I got Dad's death stare instead. Just when I think you can't get any more irresponsible, you took my car without asking, drank too much, then drove into Gloria's beloved rose bushes. Chill out, Dad. I'll fix it later, I said as I raided the fridge for food. You're not the one having to pay for the damages. We've made our decision. You have one week to get out of our house. Now hold up. I had zero places to go. I couldn't stay with Moose as he was crashing in his sister's garage and I didn't know anyone else. How could they? Ugh, sc I gotta chill a bit, so I pulled out my phone and started scrolling through dating apps. Then I matched with this stunning blonde called Trudy. She's a little older than me, but her family is rolling in dough, and also, she has her own business. Not only that, but she's hotter than an agitated dragon. So yeah, her photos seemed a little grainy, but guess the retro trend was in. Looks like I had it both ways. Love, and money. I have quite a face, but since I love beer and pizza, and without any dedication for the gym, I don't have the perfect body, but I needed to keep this girl interested. So I told her I was a tall dude with an impressive six-pack, who just graduated and was on the lookout for a girl with brains as well as beauty. This girl was actually pretty easy to talk to. She sent me pictures of her latest purchases, like phones, expensive watches, and designer clothes, along with the promise that when we started dating in person, she'd buy me whatever I wanted. Result. After four days of face pics and my priceless conversation, Trudy was smitten, and she sent me a message saying, Cole, I haven't known you long, but I know how I feel. I love you. X. Okay, that's really fast, but yeah, I've won the lottery over here. Hey, maybe she lied about her look too, but it didn't matter. She's rich. So I replied to her, I know, babes, I feel it too. X, we immediately arranged to meet in person and decided on a yellow dress code. I looked around the park trying to spot this gold mine, but all I could see was some old lady in a yellow dress. Okay, coincident, but why is she heading my way? The closer she got toward me, the wider her grin was. Cole, right? It's me, Trudy. What? No, 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 no. How come this corny, overweight, wrinkly old lady be Trudy? I was expecting the blonde beauty from the photos, not Big Bird. Once I got over the initial shock, we sat down and talked. Turns out my dream girl was in her 50s. All the descriptions and photos of her were true, but 30 years ago. She was clearly in the middle of a midlife crisis or something. You're not the same either, she sneered. You're barely taller than me. And where's the gym body? All right, fair enough. I fake smiled. Yeah, despite you looking different, I still find you very beautiful. 
That night I tossed and turned. This was all so unexpected. Trudy was totally not my type. But dating her might not hurt. She was rich. And also, I had to move out tomorrow. So at least she'd pay for me. With that, I sent her a message. Babe, you're beautiful and I want to make us official. X. The next day, I moved in with Trudy. Now, let me tell you something. Her apartment was lavish. It was full of the latest tech. Crazy. Seeing as she was so old, she probably didn't know how to use them. She worked a lot, so most of the time I was home alone. And I was free to watch cartoons and movies, munch on potato chips, and play as many video games as I felt like. One time, I was watching a movie when the door opened. And in stepped this glary-eyed dude. I shouted at him, Hey, dude! You have the wrong apartment! He tutted and said, I can assure you that I don't. I'm Alex, Trudy's son, and you must be Cole. I would say it's a pleasure to meet my mother's gold-digging boyfriend in the flesh, but unfortunately, it's not. What? Trudy has a son? And by the looks, he's even older than me. And how dare he called me a gold digger? I suppose I was, but still, he had no right to call me it. Even worse, he refused to leave. He just sat in the kitchen and waited for his mom to return. Then he had a heated argument with her in which he referred to me as a loser and a bum. Things weren't any better with my parents either. Dad told me to be independent and get a real job, not a sugar mama. And mom was just crying. Psh, whatever. This was their fault for kicking me out in the first place. What did they expect me to do? Live under a bridge? Few days after I met Alex, Trudy insisted on dragging me along to his lame work launch thing. As soon as I got there, I went straight to the food. I was stuffing a mini quiche into my mouth when this girl walked up alongside me and said, <laughs> Great minds think alike. I gave her a gormless look. Then she pointed at the food. We both headed straight for the food. I laughed at that. <laughs> this girl was funny. And hot. Really hot. Her name is Beatrice, and she works for that loser, Alex. After that, I started seeing a lot more of this Beatrice girl, as she often popped over with Alex. And while he was arguing with his mom, usually about me, I chatted to her. That was how I found out she wasn't having it easy either. She was behind on her rent because her truant brother had stolen the money and spent it all. I felt bad for her. So I took the envelope full of cash that Trudy had given to me, and I handed it to her. Okay, so I wouldn't be able to buy anything new for a few weeks but it was worth it just to know that she'd be okay. Truth was, I was really falling for Beatrice, but I couldn't do anything about it, as I was with Trudy, and I was relying on her handouts. Soon, things became stinky. I came out of the shower to see Trudy standing there with my phone in her hand. How could you? She threw it at me. Yeah, so she'd read all of the messages I'd sent to Moose, saying how I didn't find her remotely attractive and I was only with her for a free ride. Trudes, my babes, come on, those messages were just me joking, I laughed. I was just messing around. Shut up, you liar. You find me hideous. Alex was right. You were only using me for my money. And worse, you never went to college. Instead, you were in jail. I was about to lay on the coal charm when Alex and Beatrice bursted into the room. Alex shouted at me. How low life you are. What a shameless gold digger. <laughs> it's appalling. I've told her to report you to the cops. Beatrice interrupted. No, don't do that. What Cole did was wrong, but he's not all that bad. Please. I was so moved. Took a look around. Trudy was crying. Alex was so furious his eyes were bulging. And Beatrice, well, she just looked disappointed. I then packed my stuff and left in shame. Well, that was a few months ago, and I have a decent job now. Even though I live back at home, I pay my way, and I'm saving up to put a deposit down on my own place. I never should have used Trudy like that. She might be old, but she still has feelings, and the way I treated her wasn't right. I was undeniably a douchebag back then. All I want is to have a happy life with Beatrice. I really love her, which is why I asked her to be my girlfriend, but she rejected me. Man, it stung, but... I'm not giving up. Perhaps she might give me a chance once she sees I've changed. I can't fix the past. All I can do now is improve myself and keep on rolling forward.
Why is there a hole here? Could it be that the ants did it? What if they're secretly planning an attack on human beings? Hmm, what will happen to the Big Mac? Elaine, does staring at the hole help you figure out the sphere volume? What class is it? Have you been paying attention at all? Have you? Because if you have, you would have known the answer yourself. Excuse me? Oh, wait. Nah, I still don't know. Sorry, what were you saying? This is going to be in the test. You need to focus if you- Oh, this is Japanese class. Duh. That's it. We're going to the principal's office. And that's the huge of my high school life. Hi, my name's Elaine, and I've been living with ADHD since... I don't know. But of course, ADHD manifests itself differently among different people. For me, I just gotta make sure I take my medication... Wait, where's my birth certificate? Anyway, make sure to like and subscribe before I continue. Right after the principal's office visit, I was walking down the hallway when a hunky guy purposely bumped into me, knocking my bag over. Dude, is that a dinosaur? Are you a kindergartner? <laughs> hey, that's my fidget toy. Give it back. Whoops, finders keepers. Who dares mess with my friend? It's Quinn, the furious queen. Run! The two guys immediately ran for their lives. Right then, Skylar and her new boyfriend also headed over. Isn't she the weirdo from the math class? Don't tell me you're friends with her. Yes, I am indeed. You can only choose one, her or me. How about I dump you instead? Get lost. And these are my girls. We've been best friends since forever and always got each other's backs. I forget my stuff a lot and Quinn always makes sure I got everything with me before leaving any place. While Skylar has me covered every time I dozed off in class. You know, I can't sleep at night because I'm busy thinking about the ants' earth destruction plan. Hmm, maybe they're the ones who terminated the giant dinosaurs. Wait, where was I? I don't know. Rewind the video yourself. Valentine's Day soon arrived. Even though Skylar just broke up with her boyfriend, she already had loads of presents from other guys. And so did Quinn. My girls are hot. What about you, Elaine? Nothing this year yet? Nah, I don't care. You guys are all I need. How about you make a move? Any guy you've laid your eyes on? Talk about making a move. When are you going to tell Cromer you've got the biggest crush on him? That's right. Give it a try today, Quinn. I, I don't care. I can get any guy if I want to. Right, suit yourself, girl. That afternoon, we were walking when we heard an announcement from the school's radio station. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Malcolm from iHeartRadio. Today, we got a special request from someone anonymous delivered to Elaine Miller. Love the way you stared at the hole on the desk that day in math class. It was so cute. I wish I could be that hole instead. Happy Valentine's Day. Someone's got a crush on you, Elaine. You've got a secret admirer. See, someone likes you for who you are. Always stay true to yourself. I wonder who this is. OMG, I gotta find out. But didn't you say you don't care? That's right. But now the game has changed. <laughs> who could it be? They mentioned math class, so they must attend the same class as we do. That's it. All we need is the attendance list from Mr. Wilson's office. But we can't go in there. Ever heard of Mission I'm Possible? Girls, it's showtime. After class, we waited for Mr. Wilson to leave his office. Then, just like totally spies, we crawled onto the floor, successfully avoided the security guard's gawking eyes, and managed to hide from one of the teachers passing by, then continued secretly advancing toward Mr. Wilson's office. Oh, <gasps> look! They got flaming hot Cheetos now! Elaine! Elaine. After we got the list, I immediately texted a bunch of people to test it out and anxiously waited. But some people replied calling me crazy. Others reported me to Instagram. I even got a visit from the police because they thought I was some creep sliding into people's DMs. Once they left, I immediately FaceTimed the girls. Hmm, from the list, there's still Malcolm you haven't texted. Isn't he working at the radio station with you, Skylar? Yeah, we are working together, but it can't be him. He never asked me about Elaine before. Who knows? You weren't working at the radio station today, were you? My money's on him, Elaine. What should I do? I can't send messages on Instagram anymore. How about writing to him? You know, the old-fashioned way. So I prepared a love letter for Malcolm and even designed a cute envelope for it. But then I got too invested in designing the envelope. I forgot all about the letter. When I finally remembered the letter, I walked all the way back for it. But of course, my ADHD brain had to mess it up again. Not until the day when Quinn and Skylar came over and I couldn't find my doctor's envelope anywhere did I realize I'd sent Mocha my ADHD prescription instead of the letter. We immediately flew to Malcolm's house just as the mailman dropped off the prescription envelope out front. 
Seeing Malcolm walking out, I frantically ran to the other side of the street and started doing the craziest dance to get Malcolm's attention. Suddenly, I tripped and fell flat on my face. Malcolm rushed to help me up and got me inside his house. We chatted a bit as Malcolm worked on my arm. Elaine, right? We share a few classes together. We do? Yeah, you always sit near Quinn and Skylar, right? I saw you snoozing in class sometimes. Um, I guess so. Look, Malcolm, did you give me the message on the radio? Ah, the confession. Well, it's not me. I'm not your secret admirer. But that doesn't mean I don't have a chance, do I? Skylar talks a lot about you, and I've always wanted to talk to you in person. Um, speaking of Skylar, it's our girls' night tonight. Bye! And thank you. I finally managed to calm my hyperactive heart down when I got back to my room. Is Malcolm the secret admirer? He's not. How embarrassing. See? Told you. We're pretty close. He would have told me already. But he seems to like me. Really? I mean, I saw the way he helped you up when you fell. It can't be. Let's focus on finding your real secret admirer. But that doesn't mean I can't hang out with Malcolm while finding my secret admirer. Turned out we both shared a passion for hip-hop. He can make super catchy beats for me to rap. Ahem, <laughs> just kidding. Animated story show wouldn't let me. Comment down below if you want a separate video of me rapping. Since then, we started hanging out more often. Malcolm is such a caring and patient person. Sometimes my ADHD kicked in and I cut him off while he was speaking, but he never got mad and just patiently waited for me to finish. Another time when I was blabbing nonstop about whatever was in my mind, I saw him counting. What are you counting for? How many times you switch topics within two minutes? Oh, sorry. No need to. I find it cute, actually. Later on, as we parted ways, I saw Skylar waiting for me, looking a little sad. Hey, what's wrong? I'm gonna be honest with you, because we promised each other. I've actually had a crush on Malcolm ever since we started working together at the radio station. What about your recent boyfriend? Oh, it was just a fling. I just can't stand seeing you with Malcolm. Anyway, don't take it personally. Sorry, I gotta go. Skylar had a crush on Malcolm? But I, I do enjoy being with him. No, sisters first. But it wasn't easy, as Malcolm would always try to approach me. It hurt having to stay away from him. Every time he got close, my heart would beat like crazy. But I also don't want to upset Skylar, as she started distancing herself from me and Quinn. I actually quite like Malcolm. This is so complicated. I honestly don't know what to tell you. How about you try finding your secret admirer? For real this time. He might be a better suit than Malcolm. The next morning, I found a note in my locker. From your secret admirer? They want to meet me near the fountain. But when I got there, I saw another note asking me to come to the bleacher. This better not be some silly prank. When I arrived, I was shocked to see Cromer sitting there by himself. He can't be behind the notes, right? Guess I'll find out now. Just a little closer. Closer. Suddenly, he looked up and stared straight into the camera. I was about to run when he caught me. Hey, Elaine Miller, right? You could have asked me for a picture. Didn't know you have a thing for me. No, no, I... I... It was an accident. Since then, I made sure to be more discreet to see if Cromer was the secret admirer. But man, it's like this guy got the sixth sense or something. Hey, what's wrong? You look nervous. It's because she likes me. She even tried to take pictures of me, right, Elaine? It's okay. I noticed you watching me recently. Come on, just admit it. I know I'm irresistible. <laughs> Why are you doing this? You know I like him. No, no, let me explain. You know, I even thought it was a misunderstanding between you and Skylar. But you know what? Now it seems like you just want to steal from us. Hey, guys, chill out. What's going on? You chill out. Do you even know Elaine said she liked Malcolm too? And now she's also taking Cromer. My Cromer. Hey, about Cromer, it's not what you think. And Malcolm, it's not like you and him are a thing. I have as much of an equal chance as you do, don't you think? Then why were you following him just then? And you even took pictures of him? And we're talking about our chance with Malcolm now? I, I, uh, you know it's unfair to me. Unfair? We're always trying to make sure to put you first. But now you think you're the victim? I can't do this anymore. I hope you're happy you got both guys now, best friend. That was too much. They acted as if they took pity on me. I don't need anyone to look after me. I'm all fine by myself. Since we fell out, we're all caught up with our own things. Whenever I passed by Skylar, she just gave me a cold look. Quinn also seemed to have found new joys. I managed to get by just fine, but it felt like something was missing. One time, I was walking when I spotted Skylar and Malcolm surrounded by a crowd. 
turned out, Skylar confessed having a crush on Malcolm and asked him out, but he rejected her. The crowd couldn't miss the chance to mock her. Suddenly, I remembered how Skylar used to stand up for me, and I felt so bad for her. So, I decided to defend her this time, but she just ran out of there. I tried to catch up with her, but Skylar wouldn't listen. Suddenly, she crossed the street without looking, and a car came crashing into her. I frantically ran to check on her, and we immediately got her to the ER. Thank God she was fine. Just a couple bruises and scratches, but she refused to let me in. That night, I tried to call Quinn, but it kept sending me to voicemail. But I've made up my mind. I kept ringing her bell and insisted on waiting till she showed up. She finally gave in. Hey, I'm sorry for- Oh, you're sorry for me? No need to take pity on me. Just enjoy your happiness. Malcolm rejected me because he chose you. Happy much? Now just leave me alone, you ruthless, self-centered. Then she slammed the door shut in front of me, leaving me all stunned there. Ha, huh, what a show. This should totally be on Netflix. Kramer? Why are you here? I live right next door, so I see Skylar doesn't want to see you, but I do. Get off of me. I never liked you. Are you playing hard to get now, pretty little thing? Right then, Malcolm appeared out of nowhere and bolted to punch Kramer in the face. Didn't you hear what she said? Leave her alone. Can't believe Quinn and I are arguing because of you, creep. If only Quinn knew who her crush truly was. Quinn likes me? Huh. Could have told me earlier. What else is he up to? Anyway, thank you. Why are you here? I heard Skylar got into an accident right after the, uh, incident, so I wanted to pay her a visit. Now that you're here, I just want to let you know. Actually, the one sending you the confession on the radio that day was Skylar. What? She just wanted you to feel loved and not left alone on Valentine's Day. I was going to give it some time before telling you, but things got complicated all too quickly. Anyway, now that you don't have to find out who your secret admirer is anymore, would you want to go out with me? As a girlfriend, I mean. Malcolm, I do like you a lot, but I just can't bring myself to hurting Skylar ever again. I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay. I understand. Guess I'll see Skylar another time then. I'm so sorry, Malcolm. Later, I arrived home to mom packing some boxes. Can you check if you still need these from the attic? Otherwise, they have to go. I opened up the boxes to find old pictures of me, Skylar, and Quinn inside, and I immediately burst into tears. We looked so happy together, like nothing could split us apart. That's right. We're sisters. I gotta make things right. The next day, after the first period, I came looking for Skylar. Gosh, I'm so anxious. Where's my fidget toy? What if Skylar's still mad at me? Looking for this? E yes Skylar, I need to talk- Me too. I'm sorry, Elaine. Ugh, I was so hurt and embarrassed yesterday that I said nasty things to you. And you were right. I should have told you earlier I have a crush on Malcolm. But after everything, I realized how stupid I was and I don't want to lose you or lose us. Hey, me too. I couldn't sleep yesterday after hearing about everything from Skylar. I haven't been myself without you guys. Oh, me neither. You guys mean the world to me. It turned out Skylar also gave me the locker notes that day. She said she wanted me to give up on finding the secret admirer and Cromer just happened to be there. After that, I also told Quinn and Skylar about the fight between Cromer and Malcolm that night when Cromer himself showed up. Hey, Quinn, I just realized I've always liked you. I'm sorry your friend Elaine liked me, but you are my perfect match. Be my girlfriend, will you? Skylar and I immediately gave each other a worried look when Cromer, you know what Lady Gaga would say? Caught in a bad romance? I know I'm too handsome. You can't resist. She'd say, Women stick together, you jerk. Cromer immediately ran away in embarrassment. <laughs> what a loser. Oh, by the way, Malcolm left to study abroad today and he sent his goodbye to you. I feel so bad about you and Malcolm. It's okay. Right person, wrong time. From then on, us three were always by each other's side and graduated together. We even went to the same college now and made sure we go to every party together. One night at a music festival, I was waiting for Skylar and Quinn to get back from the restroom when they started playing Kendrick Lamar. Hip-hop would always remind me of someone now. Suddenly, a handkerchief was handed to me. I saw you from afar. Is this the right time to get your number now? I was sound asleep. When loud bangings jolted me awake, the cops busted in and immediately pinned me down. What are you doing? Let me go! Get away from me! Do you even know who I am? 
Rebecca Darlington, you're under arrest for stealing Mr. Woodley Jones's heirloom necklace. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Stealing? What? No, I didn't do it. Let me go. Man, I got into big trouble that time. Oh, hey guys, I'm Rebecca. Believe it or not, it's actually my bizarre life story here. Before we start, please like and subscribe. My dad passed away when I was only five, so my mom had to step up and take over the entire family business on her own. And she was the biggest perfectionist on the planet, not just in business, but in the family too. Seriously, it's her way or no way. I hated this and always tried to rebel. However, mom always found a way to ruin my fun and forced me to study business instead. Ah, <sighs> boring. But lucky me, my brother, Kevin, always got my back. One morning over breakfast, mom decided to drop a bombshell on me. Rebecca, I've arranged you a date with Brian, the Woodley Jones's son. You are to go there for dinner and be on your best behavior. They are very affluent. They own half of the city. No chance. I'm not some pawn in your bid to gain business deals. If you ignore my orders, I'll transfer you to a boarding school all the way to Australia. You wouldn't. Don't test me, young lady. Perhaps you could arrange this date for another time when Rebecca has a time to digest it? If I wanted your input, I would have asked for it. He's my brother, and he has a say in this. Your adopted brother. It's about time he knows his place. Kevin looked so hurt, but still put a smile on for me. He's such an angel, just like his mom, Rosalie. Rosalie used to work here as a maid, and Kevin would often come play with me. But then she suddenly passed away, leaving Kevin all alone in this world. So mom adopted him out of pity. To me, Kevin's always been a family, and I will not let mom treat him like that. How about I let her have a taste of her own medicine? So I took mom's magic money card and went on a huge shopping splurge. Mom wouldn't be mad if her card missed a few zeros, right? Now let's get ready for the date. Ta-da! I look crazy, right? Take that, mom. No way will this Brian guy want a second date. Kevin kindly offered to drive me to my date. He reassured me it would be okay, then passed me a box of chocolates to give to Brian. Ugh, oh, Kevin. It was gone 9 p.m. when I strolled into the grand entrance hall of the Woodley Jones's mansion. Brian's jaw dropped to the floor as soon as he saw my crazy look. Oh, but I didn't stop there. I first asked all the surfers to leave us alone, then made him nauseous with my table manners and wowed him with my big appetite. I even sneaked bites of the chocolates meant for him and playfully fed him some. After dinner, I asked him to give me a tour of the mansion. But by the time we reached the jewelry room, my head was spinning. Then everything went blurry and I blacked out. Out. The next morning, I was already back at my house without any memories of how I got back. Then these cops came in and arrested me. Now I'm in this interrogation room being accused of stealing the Woodley Jones necklace. Apparently, it was quite pricey and had been handed down through 12 generations. You were at the scene of the crime. If you want to prove your innocence, then I suggest you start telling me what happened. Like I said, I went there for dinner, then fainted, and somehow woke up in my bed with cops everywhere. Stop lying. Brian was the one who was drugged, during which time you cut off the power so you wouldn't be caught on CCTV, then stole the necklace, didn't you? Okay, Mr. Policeman. Daniel Wright, I know you're trying to play good cop, bad cop with me, so I'll get to the point. Let me go, and I will ask my mom to pay you handsomely. You know her, right? Head of the Darlington conglomerate? Are you trying to bribe to law enforcement? You could get seven years in jail for this, plus the robbery sentence. I can assure you it wouldn't be less than ten years. T ten years? I, I didn't mean to. I just freaked out. I I'm rich, okay? I have everything I want. I, I wouldn't risk stealing something like that. You did send all the staff home, so there is no one to corroborate your story. How exactly did you get home? I told you I blacked out. All I know is I didn't do anything wrong. You couldn't find the necklace at my place or on me either. You have no evidence against me. Then enjoy a stay in a cell for 24 hours, in which time I shall find the proof I need to lock you away for a very long time. Wait, no, please trust me. Someone, anyone. This was so unfair. I just wanted to go home. Fortunately, that cop couldn't find any proof and had to let me go. Finally, after 24 hours behind cold bars, unjustly accused, all I need right now is a warm welcome from Mom and Kevin and a nice bath. But what I got was a slap in the face. How could you steal from the Woodley Joneses? Now they'll never do business with me again. Mom, I didn't do it. Why does nobody believe me? Would you look at yourself? Have you done anything good for this family? All you ever did was party, throw my hard-earned money out the window, then dare to cross me. You're no daughter of mine. Get out, now! I was shocked and heartbroken by her words. 
my own mother wouldn't believe me? So, I walked out. Just you wait, Mom. I'll prove it to you. I'm no thief. With Kevin's help, I rented a place not too far from home, but it was nowhere near the luxury I was used to. No worries. Once I proved myself innocent, things would get better. Now I just had to find that police guy, Daniel, that arrested me. He must have insight on the case, right? But when I arrived at the police station, I saw Daniel being scolded by his boss. You couldn't even solve the simplest case. Daniel, what has gotten into you? You're off the case. Jack, it's over to you. Leave it with me, sir. I won't let you down. Like some incompetence. <laughs> Sheesh, that Jack guy was such a douchebag. And Daniel sure did look glum about all of this. So I approached him and suggested we work together to find the culprit and kick Jack in the butt. At first, he refused, as apparently, a suspect participating in the investigation was not procedure. Relax, it's not like I want access to classified documents or anything. Think of it as working with a suspect. If we cooperate, you could monitor me to see if I really am the culprit. It's a win-win. It's not like that. I'm no longer on the case. Jeez, I didn't expect you to give up so easily. So much for being a pro. Maybe your boss was right to reassign the case. Huh, <laughs> who are you to judge me? You're still the number one suspect in this case, and I got my eyes on you, thief. So, is that a yes? Ugh, fine. Bingo. Surely there's no place better to hunt for clues than the crime scene, right? But Brian's mansion was locked down and had security everywhere. Luckily, Daniel told me he'd already studied the house's layout and knew that the only way to intrude without being noticed was through this door. Yes, folks, you heard it right. A dog door. The bar couldn't get any lower, could it? Just shut up. We sneaked through it and ended up in the staff kitchen. The main building has already been fully swept, as that's where we knew the main suspect was. The staff quarters weren't a focus point. Daniel launched into a CSI mode, checking the area for footprints, and I watched with fascination. He found a strange shoe print, which didn't belong to any of the staff, as they were required to wear uniform shoes. This type of shoe print is rare. This could be a big clue. I didn't want him to start accusing me again, so I wiggled my foot about. Ahem, <clears throat> it's obviously not my tiny size six feet. <laughs> I didn't say a thing about you. This obviously belonged to a man with size 12 feet. Is it your accomplice? Is he Bigfoot or something? Are you crazy? Who's accomplice, you madcap? Shush, are you trying to get us caught? Oopsie, just then, we heard running footsteps coming our way. Shoot, we gotta get out. The only escape is through this window. Again? Oh, what a burden. Daniel grabbed my hand, then we both jumped through the window. Smack! His shoe was right up my face. Ouch! Get your dirty foot off me! I tried getting up, and we ended up kissing. My, my first kiss. Wait, what is that sound? I turned around to see two big dogs growling at us. We run on the count of three, okay? One, just run! We ran straight to the road and caught a taxi, leaving behind those vicious dogs. Uh, your hand, um... Oh, sorry. It was because of those dogs. Is being chased by dogs the in-trend? A few nights ago, I saw those exact two dogs chasing another man along this road. Daniel immediately asked the driver to show him his dash cam footage. It showed this tall, masked man in all black coming out of Brian's house. A shiver ran through me at the sight of him. There was something unsettlingly familiar. The next day, Daniel made me traipse into at least a dozen different shoe stores so he could ask the staff about the soul print we'd found last night. But no luck. The scorching sun was getting to me, so Daniel brought out this umbrella. Cute, huh? If only this big hole hadn't been directly above me. By lunchtime, I saw Daniel sweating in the heat, so I grabbed a tissue to wipe for him. The heat rose as we were so close, but once done, he was even more oily. <laughs> we were just like two peas in a pod. Later that day, we made it to this ancient shoe shop that said it was a Leighton, a brand that made customized handmade shoes. Wait, I've heard about that exclusive brand before, but... If someone could afford these shoes, why would they go out and about stealing? Daniel seemed to agree, and the investigation was at a dead end. The truth is, I had my suspicions about who the real thief was, so I went back to the crime scene to see if I could find any evidence. Daniel did say this dog door was the only other way in, so I searched around the area and spotted this shiny bracelet in a bush. Oh, I know who this belongs to. So, I've asked him to meet me here. I found your bracelet. Thank you so much. You know how important this is to me. The bracelet is a keepsake for my mom. She gave it to me before she passed away. I found it at Brian's house. 
The night you drove me to Brian's, did you go straight home afterward? Y yeah, of course. I've been on the investigation for a couple of days and found that the thief wore size 12 Leighton shoes. I gave you a pair for your birthday. The thief was also identified by a taxi driver's dash cam as a male, around 5 foot 10, the exact body figure of you. And now this bracelet? The coincidences are stacking up. But I can't believe it. Not without your explanation. After all, you are my brother. Yes, it was me, but I had no other choice. I actually have a sister, a half-sister from my dad's side, and she's going through surgery. I really needed the money to pay her bills. I might look successful on the outside, but I work for your mom unpaid. Don't get me wrong, I'm grateful for all she's done for me, and I couldn't ask her for more, so I took the risk. Why didn't you tell me? I can help you. You were always embroiled in arguments with your mom, so I don't want to burden you further. And you only seem to need me when you're in trouble. That's true. Thinking back, we rarely talked. Even when we talked, it was always me complaining about mom to him without realizing mom has been the hardest on him. I hated what he did, but I knew he only did it to save his sister, and I felt terrible that I'd had Kevin's love and care all of these years, and she hadn't. Kevin, don't worry. Just leave it to me. The next day, Daniel came to see me and told me the police department had just found new evidence against me. The chocolates I'd given to Brian that night contained anesthetics. It all sounds very suspicious to me and may just change the direction of my investigation. Are you investigating me now? No, it's highly possible that the real culprit wanted to target you. I need your cooperation. We have to hurry before they blame it all on you. Who helped you prepare the present that day? No one. I bought them at the store. I felt awful lying to Daniel, but I couldn't let Kevin go down for this. Not when his sister needed him. It was time for me to put an end to this devastating chain of events. I went to the police station and confessed to stealing the necklace. They arrested me, and right at that moment, Daniel stepped in, surprised. Rebecca, what are you doing here? Let her go! What are you doing? We can't arrest her without evidence. Daniel, it's okay. I already confessed. What? That's nonsense. I insisted that I did it, and he had no choice but to let them arrest me. I know it's not that simple, Rebecca, and I'm going to prove it. Daniel was right. Everything was off about this trial. First, this Jack guy had somehow swapped all the evidence against Kevin to me, from my shoe prints on the staff kitchen to the recording from the taxi driver. Plus, the necklace was later found in Miss Rebecca Darlington's bedroom. It was never there in the first place. I wanted to speak up for myself, but that douchebag Jack shut me up. The judge was about to sentence me when Daniel kicked the door and barged in. Stop, Your Honor. I believe all the evidence presented to you was faked by him. The whole court bursted out in surprise. Turns out Daniel's boss had suspected Jack was a rotten apple, so he actually wanted to use this chance to expose him. He pretended to kick Daniel out of the case and appointed Jack instead to lure him into the trap. As predicted, after I confessed to the crime, Daniel followed Jack and saw that he was taking bribes from Kevin. Well paid. I'll fake the evidence. Rebecca will go down for this. Don't mess it up. It's tricky enough to get that brat to take the blame for me. He played me? There was no half-sister who's in the hospital? Ugh, don't look at me like that. My real mom only died because of your mom, Don Darlington. That woman flagrantly accused her of stealing. Mom was so distraught, she had a heart attack and... and passed away. Don only adopted me out of guilt, and she treated me like garbage making me run around for you. So I decided to take revenge, show them how being wrongly accused of something can ruin lives. But look where vengeance got him. He was a monster, and I really wondered, was it really worth it? In the end, both Jack and Kevin went to jail. Unfortunately, without Kevin as key personnel to help out with my family business, it went into turmoil. So I offered to help mom with it. You do that, after everything I put you through. We're a family. I also felt bad for taking you and what you provide me for granted. I'm so ashamed of how I treated you. I've been cold, controlling, and unfair. On you and Kevin. It's my fault he turned against us and sought revenge. Mom, it must have been hard for you running the business and caring for me and Kevin. Especially without Dad. I forgive you and want to just put it behind us and start again. Now, I just had one last person to make amends with. Rebecca, I... I didn't think you'd ever want to see me again. I didn't. I was so mad, but then I realized that being that way was getting me nowhere. To forgive others means forgiving and liberating ourselves. I walked out of the prison feeling much more positive about it all and saw Daniel waiting for me. Say, we make a good team. What do you think about being my partner? Partner? For investigative purposes or for life? Hmm, how about both? 
Hey, I'm Madison, and I was born into a well-off family. My parents are successful entrepreneurs who always fulfill their dearest daughter's wishes. Beautiful face, supermodel figure, I have both. But unfortunately, I'm not the only one. I have a limelight-hogging twin sister, Olivia. Since elementary school, my sister has won loads of trophies for her singing. Everyone was so spellbound by her that they seemed to completely forget about me. And it didn't help when mom dressed us the same. Meanwhile, dad was always like, Whoa, I can barely tell my two princesses apart. Maddie, if your sister is tied up with her singing, you could help fill in her place in class. <laughs> Ugh, it's not funny. At all. Especially when that kind of came true. Later at 14, when I was still trying to figure out what today's homework was, my sister went and won The Voice Kids. At school, everyone kept giving me gifts and praises just to walk off on me as soon as they realized I wasn't Olivia. Hey, it's not like I intentionally tricked them. Trust me, I'm just as sick and tired of all this as everyone else, so I decided to take action. Ta-da! Did you recognize me? Still Madison here. The one-of-a-kind Madison with pixie hair, smoky eyes, nude lipstick, and this edgy outfit. I look different, right? But... Oh, are you cosplaying Olivia and her upcoming MV? Madison, you're ruining your sister's image. I tried to be different from her, but it couldn't change the fact that I'm the twin sister of a famous singer. There's so many things I wanted to do. But just imagine if I tried out for the cheerleading team or a modeling contest. People would be, look at the tragic Olivia wannabe. <sighs> the name Olivia gradually became something that haunted me. And now she's constantly gaining in fame while I remain in her shadow. I have my own dream of becoming a model too, and I've gone to every audition I could, but so far, no luck. Oh right, let's check out my new video. Maybe YouTube will be the Kickstarter for my rise to fame. Remember to remove your makeup thoroughly, and the last step is subscribe to my channel to stay updated with the latest makeup trends. It's only been 10 hours, but look at this. There are over 200,000 views and 1,000 comments. Yay! Let's see. Like if you watch this just because you thought this was Olivia. When you're boring, but you have a famous sister. Olivia, you're the goat. Please reply to my comment. What on earth is going on here? No one talked about the video content. It's all about Olivia. Why can't I get rid of that name? I am Madison. Frustrated, I closed the laptop to leave, but turned around to see the mean girls surrounding me. Silly, you should have titled it Skincare Tips from Olivia's Sister. There would have been millions of views by now. Someone with no talent like you should just stay in the dark, please. Shut up! Just wait! One day y'all gonna become my fans too! Finally, what a long day! But isn't every beginning tough? Me quitting would be exactly what those mean girls wanted, so I can't give up now! I was struggling to set up my camera when Mom opened the door and peeked in. You've started a YouTube channel? Why not ask your sister to help promote it? Ah, uh, but no worry. Everyone can obviously see that you're Olivia's sister. You'll probably receive a gold button soon anyway. Ugh, oh, what do you know? I don't even need her help. And please, stop entering my room without knocking. Nobody acknowledges my effort, just because I look like her. Fine then, just wait and see. In two more months, I'll be 18 and be able to do one thing I've been dreaming of. That will put an end to all this unfairness I had to suffer. This is it, the moment I've been waiting for. Right here, right now, I'll be reborn. I'm ready to start my life anew. You can open your eyes and look at yourself, Ms. Lewis. Okay, three, two, one. O-M-G in the mirror. A beautiful face, a stranger. Not like Olivia's or anyone I ever know. Finally, I can live my life with my famous sister out of my way. Hmm, I wonder how my parents would react to this face that I myself don't even recognize. Hey, I'm home. Hello, but who are you? It's Madison, aren't you? What happened? Did you get plastic surgery? Plastic surgery? Didn't you say you were on vacation with your friends? Your beautiful face. Why did you? You mean Olivia's beautiful face. I'm done living in her shadow. Then I ran straight to my room, leaving them there all stunned. The next morning at school, all the girls' curious eyes were on me. And the boys? Needless to say, people were buzzing around. But there was no Olivia nor Madison to be heard. Nobody recognized me. I am the one and only now. Hey, Angel. Are you lost? Let me show you around. Since when did this mean girl become so friendly? You moving here is the right decision. Our school is the best in the state. Boring. If it weren't for my parents' new investment in this area, I wouldn't be at this shabby place.
This fame-seeking silly girl instantly bought my bluffing. Her eyes widened, looking at me like a puppy. Then she did everything I asked her to, buying me sodas, carrying my bag for me, and even wiping my seat. <laughs> Suddenly, Alicia walked over and nudged Zara. Where have you been? I told you to get me a latte. And who's she? Oh, this is my new bestie. And you should go get your latte yourself, as I'll be busy showing my friend here around, right? Alicia's frown face was a picture. <laughs> what a solid friendship these mean girls have. But the fun had only just begun. As the teacher did a roll call, I raised my hand up at the sound of Madison Lewis. The whole class gasped, and you betcha, Alicia and Zara's bewildered faces were hilarious. Didn't see that coming, huh? By recess, the whole school had heard the breaking news. Me, Madison, just got plastic surgery. Some were showering me with flattery, while some just kept judging the size of my eyes or my nose bridge, blah, blah, blah. But no one compared me to Olivia anymore. They just forgot about my famous twin sister. That's all I need. Madison is unique. Ouch! What's wrong with you? Are you blind? It was you going the wrong way, Madison. Um, he looks so familiar, but I still can't think of his name. He's... It's Dylan. Have you seriously forgotten my name already? That's right! My old neighbor Dylan! His family must have moved back to town again. But how could you recognize me right away? You look a bit different, but I can still tell from your voice. Forget the past. I'm the new Madison. The best version of Madison. Then I walked away from him. Now I'm finally free to do whatever I want without being compared to Olivia. I easily got that cheerleading captain title. From this spot, I can see all the impressed spectators and Zara's look of fury. <laughs> she was the former captain who got dethroned by me. Then I went on and won the school beauty contest too. Alicia's boyfriend, Sid, even dumped her to chase after me. Who's the loser now, girl? But of course, a jerk like him didn't interest me. So I bluntly rejected him in front of everyone. One afternoon while I was going home, Sid jumped out of nowhere and blocked my way. Babe, girls are lining up to date me, but I picked you. Be my girl and you'll see. Come on, just one dinner. Let go of me! Suddenly a big looking guy rushed in, scared Sid off, and then offered to take me home. He introduced himself as Isaac, and turns out we were in the same chemistry class. Oh god, how come I never noticed this handsome boy? Probably chemistry had sucked the life out of me every time I entered that lab room. But it's okay, we can rebuild our chemistry here now. After that day, we texted each other all of the time, and a week later, we became an item. Fast, yes, but when you know, you know. Isaac took care of me during workouts, waited in the salon for hours, and even kept me updated with fashion trends. He's just perfect. But one time, when we walked hand in hand at the mall, I caught sight of Dylan's cold face. I suddenly felt awkward and tried to avoid his gaze. Strange, but why bother? Isaac and I were too busy discussing our upcoming plans anyway. I finally released my second video, and no one mentioned Olivia. But Gigi, Bella, Lily Maymac? Now they're seeing me like those hot girls? Ridiculous! And talk kept coming about how I look like other stars. Maybe she brought their photos and asked the surgeon to copy them, but no way can Replica compete with the original. Still, isn't it better to resemble your own sibling than being some stranger's copycat? <laughs> So, did I really look like a carbon copy of someone else? Again? My rush to Isaac. He's the only one I can trust. Uh, just a little, babe. But if you don't like it, there's always a way. So, I continued to undergo many other surgeries to find the perfect, unique Madison. Isaac was always there to encourage me. He was the one who suggested what part I should fix next. Sharper jawline, thinner nose, fuller lips. He has an eye for this, right? Seems like your eyes still need some fixing. I'll take you there next week. More? I know Isaac only wanted the best for me, but after pouring my fortune on endless plastic surgeries, I was completely broke, and no way would my parents agree to lend me some. Why not ask Isaac, you wonder? I can't do that. I'm not a gold digger. The surgery appointment was coming up, but I still couldn't gather enough money. What to do? What's wrong? Fighting with your guy? Desperate to offload, I blurted out my problem. So, could you help me out? I'll pay you back as soon as possible. I don't know why you think you need all this surgery. If Isaac really loved you, no way would he make you do this. Let me knock some sense into this dude. Dylan seemed so mad. I tried to pull his hand, but to no avail. Thank goodness someone blocked him. That's Olivia. I don't know what she said, but Dylan calmed down and went inside. Then Olivia walked towards me. 
You're already so pretty, Madison. Don't mind what others say. You guys don't know me at all. I'd rather be weirdly ugly than be pretty, but look the same as someone else. I don't want to be a copy of anyone. Then I stormed off immediately. Waking up after a restless night, I was reaching my phone to call Isaac, then saw an envelope of money on the nightstand. Is this from... Olivia? Why did she... Never mind. No time to think, else I'm gonna be late for my appointment. Look, my face has healed just in time for my graduation ceremony. Pretty, huh? But I haven't been able to bring myself to be happy at all, as it's been over a month since Isaac ghosted me. After the eye surgery that day, Isaac insisted I have my nose fixed too. I said I needed more time to recover, but he got annoyed and just left. I've been looking forward to this graduation, which is compulsory for everyone, so he won't be able to avoid me anymore. My parents came too, but probably for Olivia, and today's spotlight is definitely hers. Suddenly, the crowd surrounding my sister gravitated to something else. Hang on, Isaac? Oh. My. God. Standing next to him is a girl who looks exactly like me, and her dress is identical to the one Isaac once gave me. I rushed over to confront him, but he flung me away. Wow, how buzzing. Both the real deal and the knockoff are here. Can you even tell them apart, Isaac? Stop saying nonsense. My princess is the one and only. Hey, you really do look a lot like me. Who are you? So after countless surgeries, I was still a doppelganger? All I want is just to be myself, to be unique. Why is it so hard? I felt rage filling up my body. I ran to the restroom to calm myself down, but it didn't help because I overheard the truth. Isaac and Naomi broke up when she moved abroad with her family. Guess she's back now. Yeah, how much he must love her to do all this. Great, now I get it. Isaac only wanted me to get plastic surgery to look like Naomi. But once his ex is back, he threw me away like a broken toy. So the gossip girls at school are definitely not missing out on this chance to mock me. Girls, stop! My sister, it's you who needs to stop. Don't you know you're the cause of everything? Calm down, Madison. It's completely normal to look like someone. To me, and to your family, you've always been the one and only Madison. No! I've never been seen as the only one! Then I told Dylan everything I'd bottled up inside, why I absolutely needed plastic surgery, why I was so obsessed with the fact that I resembled my sister. Everybody had always thought of me merely as Olivia's shadow. I never knew that's how you felt. I'm sorry, Madison. We are such bad parents. Startled, I turned around to see everyone. Madison, I've never looked down on you. I only thought I could use my reputation to make things easier for you. We always try to do the best we can for you two. We thought this change in appearance was what you wanted. If only we'd realized the painful reason behind it. Oh, wow. They actually cared this much about me? I cried even louder and ran straight into their open arms. Maybe Dylan was right. Maybe I really am special just for who I am, not for what I look like. The next day, I went to school to clear out my locker. High school is over. Now I can shake off all the bad memories I had here. Let's start things anew. Oh, finally found you. Um, Naomi, right? I, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to copy you. I didn't know. It's all right. I know it wasn't your fault. I swear, I had no idea Isaac was that much of a jerk. I immediately dumped him and exposed him online. How could he think us girls are just replaceable items? He even had the cheek to cry and beg me. But men like him don't ever deserve to be near us. I thought you'd be angry with me. For what? Madison, I'm truly sorry for what you had to go through. But everything has a bright side to it, don't you think? What do you think about having another twin sister? My dream of becoming a star on a runway has finally come true. But the most amazing thing was finding a companion with the same passion as me, who's none other than my new identical twin, Naomi. Bet no one can tell us apart. Miss Madison Lewis, would you go on a date with me after this? Oh, but I'm Naomi. Don't ever think you can fool me, Madison. You've always been different in my eyes. I was at a bustling party, waiting for the one who would decide whether I'd won my cousin's bet or not. Forget your dumb ex. Fifty bucks if you get the number of the next guy walking through that door. Oh, here comes my target. I hurriedly approached him, but stumbled and we're kissing. I could feel the taste of grapes on his lips. I immediately pushed him away and stood up. Uh, f phone number, please. The guy looked confused, but still handed me a note. All done. Time to flee the scene. 
Hi, I'm Agatha, a super introvert who hiccups when nervous. And lucky enough, my kooky cousin dragged me to this crazy party. I ran home to see mum looking all excited. Oh, my sweet child, you're back already. It's just not my thing, mom. But cooking is. I have some amazing news. The local soccer club is looking for a chef, so I recommended you. And guess what? They said you can start ASAP. Yes, I've dreamt of becoming a chef since I was little. And now that dream will soon come true. Yahoo! Today's the day. I eagerly arrived at the soccer club, but my jaw almost hit the floor when I saw Mateo, my ex. What was he doing here? Flustered, I looked away and saw that guy from the party. What on earth? My life's officially over. After the introduction, I immediately ran to the pitch for some fresh air, but then a hand patted my shoulder. It's him again. No calls or texts? You asked for my number. Are you that shy? <laughs> I'm Killian, by the way. It, it was just a joke. I... Please leave. But then he stepped even closer. Panicked, I pushed him away. Almost made him fall backward. I tried to catch him, but... Not again. This time he smells like chocolate. Oh, you like my lips this much? Why not just say so? <gasps> Holy moly! I ran straight away without looking back. I better stay ten miles away from him. Suddenly I saw Mateo passing by. Has he seen anything? But why bother? As if he cared. He dumped me. Okay, Agatha, you're here to work, so focus. But with these jocks around, it's not that easy. They always jump scared me when I was doing my job and made fun of me when I got lost in the changing room. And Killian was always there in time to save me. Everyone, stop. Close your eyes. Then he threw a super stinky, sweaty towel at my face. Ew. Plus, that jerk is the pickiest eater on this planet. He's constantly complaining about my food and demanded I cook him something else. There you go. I'm cutting on starch to build muscles. I'll get rid of the pasta. Oops, I forgot. I'm lactose intolerant. Okay, no cheese. Poor little chicken. I can't eat that. So, are you allergic to the plate too? Meanwhile, other team members were way easier, especially Mateo. We used to date, so I knew his taste pretty well. I gave you some extra pork, your favorite. I don't like pork. I hate pigs. Just then, Killian jumped in. You should focus on me instead. We can discuss my meals privately. Before I could say anything, he already handed me a note. Me and him alone? That's weird. But learning his eating habit would help my job, right? Nope. Big mistake. Killian had an endlessly absurd list of diet restrictions. No more than 2.5 grams of salt a day, mayonnaise on everything, no mushrooms, and spaghetti without tomato sauce? Did he just descend onto Earth? And during the meal, this dude kept smiling and staring at me. You like me or something? You have a veggie on your teeth! Dude! Oh gosh! I immediately ran to the restroom, but Killian caught up with me, holding a ball of wool. Is this yours? I looked down to see a wool thread coming out of my dress's hemline. <gasps> oh gosh, I wish the ground just swallowed me whole right now. Surprisingly, Killian put his jacket on me. That was cool. Just then he caught me drooling over him, so I immediately pretended to play with my phone. <laughs> I just want to beat level 9674 in Candy Crush. Strangely, over the next few days, Mateo started being nice to me. Too nice. Your cooking is top-notch as always. Tomorrow, can you make me those delicious vegetable fritters we used to have together? He still remembered that? Boy, he made my heart race. I sprinted to the kitchen and put on music to calm down. Soon, I found myself singing and dancing to my jam. I promise that you'll never find another like me. He he! Ooh, 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 ooh! Mamma mia! How long had he been there? Flustered, I burnt myself. Killian rushed over and held my hand. You okay? You can't even handle yourself? Then he insisted on finishing my work and even prepared us a dish. Wah, his broad back. Isn't he quite a charmer when he cooks? We talked a lot, and turns out, we share a ton of things in common. Beneath his teasing, he's actually gentle, caring, and a good listener. I suddenly realized that I had stopped hiccuping since ages. One afternoon, while giving out water, I saw Killian. Oh wow, it's like the sunshine drew a halo around him in his exquisite face. Wait a minute, why was I smiling? Suddenly, a fancy-looking girl came over. Killian, why didn't you reply to my messages? You left me hanging all night. Look, 
I have dark circles now. That's on you. I went to leave, but out of nowhere, Mateo pulled me into a corner. Why were you so close to him? He's only messing with me. Huh? What do you mean? He competes with me in everything. I was cold to you to protect you. Now that he knows you're important to me, he'll harm you to hurt me. I think he's just trying to be nice? His dad is our club's biggest sponsor. You really think he wants to hang out with people like us while Sloan, whose family owns the largest hospital in the state, is here? I don't know what to believe anymore. However, I had to admit they looked like a perfect couple. While holding a coffee tray one time, I clumsily bumped into Sloan. Are you blind? Why do they let a doofus work here? Come on, Sloan, you bumped into her. He sure seemed sweet to me. Maybe Mateo had misunderstood him. Then once, I spotted the two of them in a quarrel where Killian even pushed Mateo. I tried to intervene, but they brushed me off. What was going on between them? A few days later, I returned from the grocery store to see the head coach in a fit of rage. Explain to me how Mateo is hospitalized for eating your food. What? Why? Stop it! You're fired! My head spun in a million circles. I hadn't done anything wrong. I was packing my things when Sloane appeared. Well, well, well. Looks like little Miss Muffet met her match. Only need some simple tricks to get rid of you and your phony, needy act. Stop dreaming about Killian. You're not at our level. Wait, our? Who's with you? But Sloane just smirked and strutted away. That's when the memory of Killian and Mateo fighting struck my mind. So, Killian must have conspired with Sloane to harm Mateo and ruin my career in the process? How could he? Still, he had the cheek to text me as if nothing had happened. Dummy, Agatha. You should have listened to Mateo from the start and stayed away from Killian. I visited Mateo in the hospital, but he coldly shooed me away. It was exactly like the day he dumped me. Today is the city's championship final, and to be honest, I didn't really know why I was here. I looked around for Mateo, but couldn't find him. He might still be sick, so we had to skip this match. On the field, Killian seemed distracted and off his game. What's wrong with him today? Killian, my dear. The lady sitting next to me looked nervous and kept fidgeting. I spoke to her and figured out she was Killian's mom. She told me the shocking news. His little sister was missing. He was blackmailed into making their team lose or he'd never see his sister again. Killian faced the goal, but he didn't kick. Instead, he passed to another player who then scored the goal. The spectators cheered in triumph, while other players celebrated the goal with Killian. Blood seemed to have drained from his face. As predicted, the threats kept coming. I couldn't just sit and pray, so I asked Killian's mom for more clues. She played me the recording of her daughter. I strained my ears to listen and heard a noise. Peekaboo! Peekaboo! I know that sound. It's Mateo's parrot! Ma'am, I know who's behind this. It's Mateo! What? I can excuse fake food poisoning, but how dare he harm my Killian? Ugh, say it again, Sloane. He asked me to fake the medical paper, and I figured it would also kick you out, so I agreed. But what about Killian's sister? That was nothing to do with me, I swear. We rushed to Mateo's house. It took him forever to open the door. Mateo, are you okay now? I... I have thought a lot... about us, and realized how important you are to me. And I don't want to lose you again. Mateo, could you- Oh please, look at yourself. I just dated you for fun. You truly think I like you? <laughs> and no more pork for me, please. Do you seriously think I'd want you back after the despicable things you did to me and Killian? Killian? Props to that freak for coming at me for telling the truth. So pathetic of him to go for my leftovers. It's you, dummy. Then he blurted out how he cooked up this entire scheme to ruin Killian's career out of the jealousy which was triggered when he visited him in the hospital and told him not to worry about missing the match as they've had a new strategy to cover his absence and the team would perform well anyway. I'm not a pawn that can easily be kicked out. You wish. You are pathetic. Right then, Sloane appeared with the little girl. Let's go. There's no time. Where are you going, Agatha? Admit it. You're still smitten with me. Sorry, the old Agatha can't come to the phone right now. Why? Oh, cause she's dead. After that, we rushed to the stadium. There, I shouted out Killian's name and raised his sister's hands. He seemed surprised to see us, then nodded and smiled. Afterwards, he played like a pro and led his team to victory. 
He was even awarded Player of the Match. It's an honor to receive this title, and I want to shout out to someone important. Without her, this wouldn't have happened. Agatha! Hi, that's me, Maxine, hiding behind some bushes and spying on a girl. Don't get me wrong, I don't have a crush on her, nor am I a total psychopath. I'm just doing a favor for my mate Damon. But if I'd known how crazy this was all going to get, I'd never have agreed to help him. It all started when Damon fell in love with this girl, Sophie. She had this mysterious charm that made him want to talk to her right away. And he did. She didn't even glance at him. She just walked away. Ouch. I didn't like her one bit. She was so stuck up. But Damon didn't give up that easily. He tried all kinds of tricks to get her attention, even waiting for the bus with her, even though he had a car. Nothing worked, though, and this made him miserable. He begged for my help, but I said, No way! Then he said, Aw, come on, Maxine, you're a girl, so just befriend her or something. Maybe you can find out what she likes, her fave foods, music, etc. Then I can try to impress her. Please, I'm begging you. I'll even lend you my Nintendo Switch for a month if you agree. You can't say no to that. He had me at that. I'd do anything to get a Nintendo Switch. Fine, it's a deal, but don't blame me if it doesn't work. So after class that day, I searched for Sophie. She was at the bus stop, and I was about to approach her when suddenly she walked away. I decided to follow her, and on the way, she stopped to help an old lady cross the road. Wow, I was surprised. For someone with such a cold face, she had a pretty warm heart. Hmm, maybe she wasn't so bad after all. After that, she started walking towards the park, and by then it was starting to get dark. What was she doing? She sat down on a bench in a creepy part of the park, almost like she was waiting for someone. I hid behind a bush so she wouldn't see me, but I was totally freaked out. Suddenly, two guys appeared and started talking to her but they didn't seem like her acquaintances. Oh my gosh, she looked panicked. I had to help. I quickly shouted, help, officer, please help. There are two guys bothering us. Obviously there was no officer, but it worked. The two guys ran off and I rushed over to make sure Sophie was okay. She was surprised to see me, but then she hugged me and thanked me for saving her. Her whole body was shaking. She must have been terrified. I walked with her back to our dorm and she told me how she liked to come to the park at night because it was so peaceful. I told her it was clearly dangerous and that she probably shouldn't go alone anymore. Then we exchanged numbers, and after that we became quite close. Close enough. That was a few days later I told her Damon had a big crush on her, and asked if she'd maybe go on a date with him, but she just shook her head and said she wasn't ready. Her eyes looked sad, so I didn't push it any further, Maybe she'd just gone through a bad breakup? I didn't ask her again, but one night I was heading to her dorm for a movie night when I heard two people fighting. It was Sophie and some guy, and she was crying. It looked like the guy was about to hit her, so I ran over and said, Hey, what the heck do you think you're doing? Leave her alone or I'll call the cops. He just laughed at me and said to Sophie, We're not done yet. Then he stormed off. I asked Sophie if she was okay and who that guy was. Then she told me how he was her ex, and that he kept trying to get back together with her, but she wasn't interested. As she told me this, she started to cry and said, Because of him, I've become so scared and anxious. I'm even too scared to sleep at night. I felt so sorry for her, and told her I was here for her, and that she could call me any time. Well, Maybe I shouldn't have said that, because that's exactly what she started doing. Every night she'd call me, and we'd end up chatting until 3 a.m. I was so exhausted, but I wanted to help her. She seemed so anxious all the time. Damon knew we chatted a lot, but he'd stopped asking about Sophie. It seems he'd lost interest and was more worried about me looking like a zombie from The Walking Dead. You seriously need some sleep, Maxine. Leave Sophie be. She's clearly got issues. It's probably best to not get too involved. Easier said than done, though. But that night, I decided not to answer her call. I went to bed early, and when I woke up the next morning, I had about 20 missed calls and 50 texts from her. Oh my gosh! Some of them said she was so lonely and that I'd abandoned her, 
Then one said, if you don't pick up, then I will end it all. Okay, this was crazy. I immediately called her, but she wouldn't pick up. I rushed to her dorm, but nobody answered. I was panicking by then and bashing on the door, screaming, Sophie, open this darn door. But there was still no answer. I was terrified she'd done something bad, so I asked some students to help me bash down the door, and that's when she opened the door. I've never been so happy to see someone alive. I ran over to hug her, but she looked so annoyed. What are you doing here? You're making a scene, she said. What? I was so worried about you. You said you were going to... But she interrupted me and said, You need to get some sleep, Maxine. You seem insane. I couldn't believe it. After all those calls and texts, she was the insane one, not me. I didn't feel like yelling back, so I just left her. I needed some space. She tried to apologize to me over the next few days, but I didn't want to be around her. She even texted me saying if I wouldn't be her friend anymore, then life wasn't worth living. I was so tired of her threats, so I just ignored them. And then things got worse. A few days later, Damon and I were studying together when Sophie called me and said she was in the hospital. She told me that she had a brain tumor and they'd just done a biopsy to see if it was malignant or benign. I couldn't believe it. She asked me if I could pick her up and I said, of course, this was so scary. I told Damon and he just said, I think she's making it up, Maxine. How could she suddenly have a tumor? You guys just had a fight and suddenly she's in the hospital? Come on, think about it. I was shocked. Damon, how could you? You're such a jerk. Then I ran off and arrived at the hospital to find Sophie sitting outside wearing a hospital cap. She said her hair had been shaved off for the biopsy, and I asked to see the scar, but she wouldn't show me. She said she'd get a headache if she took it off. I was just glad that she was okay and gave her a ride home. We made up, and I decided to look after her for the day. She seemed so weak, I couldn't bear to see her suffering— I called Damon to tell him that he owed me an apology and told him about Sophie. And he just said, Oh, wow, okay, sorry, hope she's okay then. But then a few days later, he called me and said, Listen, Maxine, Sophie's a liar. She didn't have a biopsy. I bumped into her earlier and her cap fell off, and she has a full head of hair under there. No way it would grow back that fast. Why would she lie to me? I didn't get it. I needed to know the truth, so after class, I went to her dorm. She opened the door right away, and sure enough, she had all her hair intact. She probably knew Damon had told me, and so hadn't even bothered to keep up the lie. This made me furious. Straight away, I started shouting at her. Honestly, Sophie, what is wrong with you? Why would you pretend to be sick like that? Friends don't do that. Sophie grabbed my hand and said, Maxine, I'm sorry, I was desperate. I only did it because I missed you and wanted you to care about me again. I took it too far, though. Please forgive me. Are you crazy? I screamed. I was worried sick about you. Are you sure there's not something wrong with you? Sophie started grinning in a weird way and said, The only thing wrong with me is that I'm in love with you, Maxine. She wouldn't let go of my hand, and I just stared in shock. What? What did you say? You heard me. I love you. Then she started to manically laugh and said, I've loved you since the day we first met. I knew you were following me, so I pretended to be in danger so you'd come rescue me. Even my ex-boyfriend was fake. He was just one of my friends pretending. Can't you see? I'm willing to do just about anything to get your attention. If that's not love, then what is? This couldn't be happening. I tried to stay as calm as possible and said, Listen, Sophie, I'm flattered. Really, I am. But I'm straight. I see you as just a friend, okay? But Sophie wouldn't give up. She grabbed my hands again and said, How do you know that? You didn't even try to love me yet. Just give me a chance and I'll show you what true love looks like. I tried to let go of her hands, but it was impossible. Sophie grabbed my hands tighter and tighter that it even began to hurt. She looked me in the eyes and, oh my god, it's like I couldn't recognize her anymore. She looked like a crazy person, like a psychopath. Then she began to speak in a really creepy tone. 
You can't get away from me. You're mine now. I was so scared. I needed to get out of here, so I pushed her really hard that she fell on the ground and I ran like a mad woman out of there until I was back in my dorm. Then I called the police, but by the time they reached her dorm, she was gone. I told them what happened and showed them a photo of her, and you won't believe it. Apparently, I wasn't the only girl Sophie had attacked. There were other girls, too. After that night, I was terrified. Everywhere I went, it felt like someone was watching me. Then one evening, after my shift at work, I was walking through the park back to my dorm, when I heard someone up ahead. I knew right away it was Sophie, but she wasn't alone. She was with some guys. They spotted me and started heading towards me. But I ran as fast as I could, and luckily the police were just outside the park and went in and arrested them. Sounds like a coincidence, right? Well, it wasn't. Sophie's not the only one who can fool people. I knew Sophie was stalking me. So I told the police, and together we created this plan to catch her. And voila, it worked. Sophie, if you're watching this, I wish you all the best. But let's not meet ever again. That's enough stalking for one lifetime.